In the past week, you've likely heard the term Omicron or Omicron variant bouncing around on your news feed or your timelines. It's the name given to the latest mutation of the SARS-CoV-2 virus, or COVID-19. It was discovered in South Africa, and following that discovery, several countries have imposed travel restrictions to that region, including the U.S. But what do we really know about it? Well, first, how we got here. As the World Health Organization, or WHO, explains, variants are, are when a virus mutates. Variants don't always mean worse, and many times they're just slight differences and can be slightly impactful, if at all. But sometimes a variant can essentially take over or cause other virus variants to die off or fade away. The WHO groups those variants into different categories. Variants under monitoring, variants of interest, or variants of concern. It is named as a variant of concern because it has some concerning properties. Um, this variant has a large number of mutations, and some of these mutations have some worrying characteristics. Early lab data shows it has so many variations that it may be more contagious than other variants. It has the molecular characteristics that would strongly suggest that it would be more transmissible. It has a bunch of mutations, a disturbingly large number of mutations in the spike protein, which is the business end of the virus, which really binds, particularly in one particular component of that spike that binds to the receptors in your body. There's fears that those changes may allow it to actually be more effective at infecting people despite vaccination status. It's contagiousness. I think it is clear from what's happening in South Africa that this Omicron variant does spread rapidly. But keep in mind, this is in the context of a circumstance where in South Africa there was relatively little COVID going on. What we don't know is whether this Omicron variant will outcompete Delta in a country like ours or whether Delta, because it's been so successful, will basically just push it aside. All right, so let's get in the weeds just a little bit to kind of put all of this into something you can visualize. All right, so first, researchers looked at the DNA sequencing of the virus and particularly the Omicron variant, or B11529. They noticed that there's changes in those spikes, right? But one of the changes that they noticed was a sequence that's called E484A. Now, that sequence is shown to have an increased ability to not be detected by our antibodies. And we do worry that if those mutations are in the spike protein, and I'll show you my little model here, the spike protein, of course, sitting on the outside of the virus, that's what your antibodies have to work against in order to protect you against this virus. So we worry that if the spike protein is of a different shape, uh, maybe the antibodies won't stick quite as well. That's the reason for the concern. Scientists also spotted this mutation right here, N501Y which they say kind of allows the virus to reproduce better in areas like people's noses and throats. They're concerned that it will be easier to spread from people coughing, sneezing, and, and even breathing. I think we'll get some information on transmissibility and severity in the coming days, maybe a week or two. I do think it will take some time for us to get a better understanding of the impact on vaccines. Our estimate is between two and four weeks. So in the next few weeks, Health leaders hope to have answers to how effective the vaccine is on this new variant or how severe symptoms can be with this variant. But early reports out of South Africa are optimistic. The majority of what we are, are presenting to primary healthcare practitioners are extremely mild cases, so as mild to moderate. And um, so, so these patients uh, is, means they don't need to be hospitalized for now. I have seen um, vaccinated people and not really very sick. That might change going forward. As we say, this is early days. Health leaders have stressed the rise in cases is linked to vaccination status. And right now, if we look at South Africa, roughly a quarter of the population is vaccinated with only 35% of the country's adults being fully vaccinated. And because of that, the fear of this variant's possible contagious nature is fueling health leaders to renew their push to get more people vaccinated and get their booster shots. However, it is important at this time to remember that the collective message from U.S. health officials is a calm one. This variant is a cause for concern, not a cause for panic. We have the best vaccine in the world. 
<clears throat> the best medicines, the best scientists, and we're learning more every single day. So as the world starts to navigate more with this Omicron variant and we learn more about its effect on patients, be sure to get the latest from KSHB.com or on our free mobile apps.